everyone, my name is Taylor Smith, aka The Career Coach, and I am here today to share with y'all 10 things you might be doing wrong with your resume. As a reminder, this channel is for anyone who is looking to get noticed by recruiters, stand out as a top candidate, and looking to get offers. If you fit into any of those categories, then you are in the right place. As a reminder, I am a career coach, so if you are looking for one-on-one -on -one help or looking to join my Secure the Bag coaching program, please take a look in the description below or visit taylorosmith.com. Until then, let's go ahead and get back to our video. All right, so as I mentioned, we'll be talking about 10 things you're doing wrong with your resume that might be stopping you from advancing to the next steps in your application process, whether that's an interview, a screen call, or just even a simple email back. So let's go ahead and dive in, starting backwards at Number 10, you have an unprofessional email address. So you want to not use those old school emails from your childhood, like it's your girl T Smith at abc.com or queen Tay at xyz.com because they're not very professional and it, it looks kind of cheesy. So make sure you take the time if you don't already have one of making a more professional email address. So this is just a combination of your first and last name, maybe your first and middle name. Um, if you have a really common name like me, you can add a few numbers or digits in there, but just try to keep it really simple. Um, the other bonus of creating a separate email address is that you'll have something separate with all your professional emails from your personal or your junk. So that way you're less likely to miss something. Number nine, you have poor formatting. So your resume might be a little unorganized. It's really hard to follow. It's kind of difficult to find the important information that I need to not as quickly and as fast as I would have hoped as a recruiter and in order to prevent this you want to make sure that you're using templates or following kind of like a, a standard or a style of resumes believe it or not there kind of is a standard format to follow um, so go ahead and try to use that when creating your resume um, to help keep it organized and easy to follow number eight you have little white space so your resume has so much stuff on it it's really hard to digest looking at it at one time it's kind of a little bit overwhelming um, because it's not too appealing to the eye it's just stuff kind of everywhere and it's really hard for me to decide where to start at as a recruiter so there are tips and tricks that you can use you can decrease your margins to allow more space you can decrease the font sometimes but just keep in mind you don't want to have too much stuff on your resume where it leaves the person like whoa um sometimes less is more number seven you have little to no relevancy on your resume so you have a specific position that you're applying to but most of your current or recent experiences aren't very relatable which is okay um but neither do your characteristics really align with some of the skill sets that they're looking for so make sure that you go ahead and update those and make sure that you're including buzzwords to align more with what the company is looking for. Number six, your resume is longer than one page. So the average recruiter looks at your resume for the first time from about 10 to 30 seconds. So you have about 15 seconds to make a good lasting impression with somebody um, the first time around. If it sparks an interest, then they'll most likely spend more time looking at it, maybe like three to five minutes. But what you wanna do is make sure that you have a good template and flow um, so it's really easy for the recruiter to grab the information they need and also have the most relevant and important information near the top so they can really digest it. When you start to have a second page, it's really hard to squeeze that into that 30 second window. So make sure that you condense everything into one page. And unless you have 10 to 20 years experience or have been on the executive level, you really should only have one page and I guarantee you, you can consolidate it and focus on just the relevant stuff. Number five, your descriptions are too wordy. So your descriptions are more like paragraphs versus bullet points, which make it really easy for the recruiter to scan your resume and get a good idea of what you've done. Remember, you wanna make sure that your resume is clear and concise and you only have about 15 seconds to grab their attention. Number four, your resume only talks about what you did and not any of your major accomplishments. 
So your resume mostly highlights and focuses on your day-to-day -day transactions with all your positions, organizations, etc. But what companies are really interested in are the things that you did that were outside of the box. What lasting impression did you make? What impact did you make? What leadership qualities did you have? Did you improve a process? Did you lead a team? Did you lead this activity? Did you do any cost savings? Whatever it is, it may be something very, very minor that you may have just done one day and was a major, minor adjustment, but just rack your brain and think of these things in order to make yourself stand out. Number three, it has fluff. Fluff is anything on your resume that doesn't add any value, and this could be a number of things. For example, it could be having a relevant courses section on your resume when you are a junior or senior in college, when recruiters already know what classes more or less you should be taking. Um, this could also be having soft skills on your resume. So having a section that talks about a lot of the things that you should kind of already have as qualities or could describe in your descriptions instead. This could also be having any leadership or volunteering experience from over five years ago that isn't something you've done recently or very relevant anymore. So make sure that you go ahead and remove these sections or things that are taking up valuable real estate that could be used to work on something that's way more valuable and relatable. Number two, your resume doesn't have any metrics meaning you don't have any numbers, metrics or values depicting your accomplishments to give us a better idea of the magnitude of the number of things that you have accomplished and done daily, weekly, monthly, what have you. By adding in these numbers, it really gives someone a big idea and picture of what it was exactly that you did within a specific time frame, which can really sound way more impressive than what your general statement is. So make sure that you include metrics in your resume. You really should have one in at least almost every bullet, I would say maybe about 90%, um, but make sure that you're including these numbers in your resume. And for the number one thing you're doing wrong with your resume, you're worried more about the cosmetics than the actual content on your resume. So oftentimes I'll get students or clients who ask me, hey, should I add color to my resume? Should I use this template for my resume? Should I add um, a bar graph to my resume? Should I add this graphic? Should I add a photo, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I think all of these are really great ideas and being very creative, but I just don't think that the resume is the right place to do that because honestly, recruiters, we care more about the content that is on your resume. So again, back to what I said before, the recruiter only really looks at your resume for about 10 to 30 seconds. So we really wanna understand more about the meat and the bulk of what you've done. So having these other things on there is honestly just a little bit of a distraction and taking away from valuable time they could be using to learn more about you and the skill sets that you bring to the table. Um, especially if I see someone who's cared more about what their resume looks like versus the content on there and your descriptions and everything is not up to par, then that kind of speaks to you as well. So make sure that you're worried more about your descriptions and the content on your resume versus more so how it looks. Although formatting is important, like we discussed before, but make sure you're worried more about quality than appearing. Alrighty guys, so these are the top 10 things that I have personally seen students and my clients do wrong with their resume. I hope that you learned something valuable today and this helps you. Um, if you are interested in seeking a career coach or learning more about my Secure the Bag coaching program, please check out my website in the description below or visit taylorosmith.com. I do have one-on-one -on -one services available as well as the Secure the Bag coaching program. So if you want to book a free consultation, go ahead and visit my website or look at more of the information on the site. Um, I hope you guys, again, learned something great. Y'all have a great rest of the day. Uh, make sure to check out my other videos and stay tuned and subscribe for more information related to the career journey and application processes. All right, take care, y'all. Bye.